Tonight, we look at the story that has been told about the murder of John Benet Ramsey and why so many think her parents guilty and what this tells us about the America she so briefly lived in. What is the number two clue we all missed in the John Benet Ramsey case? Hello and welcome to True Crime Rocket Science, the most authentic voice in true crime. Do you recall the number one clue we all missed was John Ramsey apparently saying that he read John Bonet and Burke a bedtime story on the night before the incident? Well, what would you say is the number two clue? It's not Patsy's inconsistent statements, for example, first going into John Bonet's bedroom, then reading the note, which later changed to reading the note first and then heading into John Bonet's bedroom. It's not Patsy's statements because they have already been dealt with quite exhaustively by many who feel Patsy is responsible. It's not the scuff mark on the wall or the suitcase against the wall. It's also not the book Mindhunter that was allegedly in the house at the time, recorded in photos but not logged as evidence. It's also not the ransom note. We didn't miss that. We did see that. So... What then? There was a flashlight and a baseball bat both found at the house, and the investigators thought one of those could have caused John Bonet's head wound. Did they show you either of those items? They showed me a picture of the baseball bat, like on the side of the house or something. Yeah. Is there anything strange about it being out there to you? Was there anything strange about the bat being out there? Well, what about the flashlight? And is there any link between the bat and the flashlight? Before we get to that, if you haven't subscribed to the channel, please do like, share, leave a comment, and let's get started. The flashlight is probably the biggest item beside the ransom note itself, indicative of misdirection. Now, due to the messy kitchen area, I think it's easy to assume that the flashlight is just part of the paraphernalia, but that would be a mistake. Unlike the bowl with pineapple inside, which has Burke and Patsy's fingerprints on it, the flashlight has zero fingerprints on it. This alone suggests intrigue surrounds the flashlight, but as it turns out, there's more to it than meets the eye. Now let's go through five reasons why the flashlight is misdirection. Number one, in common with the ransom note, the flashlight had zero fingerprints on it, even the batteries inside had no fingerprints. An investigator believed the outside of the flashlight as well as the batteries inside had been wiped down. Number two, the Ramses initially claimed to recognize the flashlight, but then later claimed that it didn't belong to them. In Paula Woodward's Apologia, she associates the black maglite flashlight with those carried by police officers similar to the dismissal of the high-tech boot print in the dust beside the wine cellar, where that boot print was also associated with that of police officers. Number three, the drawer in which John Ramsey's flashlight was usually kept was open, with no flashlight inside. In other words, the Ramseys not only denied the flashlight in the kitchen was theirs, but indirectly seemed to suggest that the flashlight they did have was taken. Number four, the flashlight is the most obviously out-of-place item in the kitchen, besides the pillow. And number five, due to all the above issues, the flashlight is assumed by many to be the murder weapon, and that was the point, wasn't it, to create that very impression. Now let's examine the seven references to the word flashlight from Patsy's first interview with law enforcement in April 1997. There were no references in John's first interview. Steve Thomas says the following, Patsy, to the best of your memory, how many flashlights did your family own or keep in the house on 15th Street? Patsy Ramsey, I don't know. Now, first of all, if you were, if you were asked that question, could you answer it? I know I could. And could you say where you keep your flashlight? I know I could. If you were presented with this image, would you know instantly whether it was yours or not? I know I could. 
So consider this possible scenario. The Ramses knowing exactly where that flashlight comes from and whose it is, but being quote-unquote unsure about it. And as a result, it becomes an object of suspicion. Now, why would he want to do that? Steve Thomas goes on to ask, do you? And Patsy interrupts him, says, Burke had some round ones, you know. Steve Thomas, did John, as a pilot or for the cars in the gar garage or the house, did he, do you recall flashlights? Patsy Ramsey responds, I think we had kind of a big one. I don't know where it was. I think John Andrew gave it to John for, I don't know where, whether he gave it to him for the plane or not. I know he keeps one on the plane, I think. Now, notice how Patsy self-interrupts after the word for. She could be meaning to say for Christmas or for a particular use. Steve Thomas says, can you describe that for me? What color it was, for example? Patsy Ramsey says, the one John gave. Steve Thomas, uh-huh. Patsy Ramsey, I think it was in that drawer, that, that little, we usually kept it, I think, in that drawer, yeah. Now, there are a lot of problems here, besides Patsy contradicting herself, and also besides Patsy failing to identify the color when asked directly. And I, I don't like Detective Steve Thomas offering Patsy scenarios for why there might be a flashlight, but as it happens, she seems to know John has a flashlight, in his plane, but not in her own home. Well, certainly initially. Then Detective Steve Thomas says, maybe in this room somewhere in this vicinity, Patsy. Yeah, and I think it was like a big black one, you know. Now, what's interesting is uh, the detective asks her a question about the flashlight, and obviously Patsy may assume that he doesn't know. And obviously at this point when he says, um, maybe it was in this vicinity. You can imagine that Patsy thinks that maybe he did know. Anyway, Steve Thomas says, well, is this picture, and that's not a good photo, would that be representative of the flashlight that you are describing? Now, faced with a picture, Patsy responds, yeah, probably. I'm afraid I don't know what this is. Now, <laughs> it's not clear what Patsy doesn't recognize. Does she not recognize the kitchen? Does she not recognize the flashlight? Does she, does she not recognize where it is in her home? But it could well be that she's being shown many of the images you're seeing right now. And her response is, well, curious. She says, I'm afraid I don't know what this is. Could her response be calculated to make law enforcement want to pay more attention to the flashlight? Because it's interesting. It's a flashlight in the kitchen, and yet Patsy doesn't bring it up herself. Also, the flashlight is standing up. It's sort of erect. It's not just sort of lying down on the ground. It's almost like saying, hey, look over here. If it didn't belong to them, why not be explicit about it? Steve Thomas goes on to say, and for the purpose of the tape, I'm showing a photograph. I'm showing Patsy a photograph depicting, is that the kitchen table? And his colleague says, kitchen counter. Steve Thomas says, kitchen counter with several items, but including what appears to be a flashlight on it. Patsy Ramsey says, yeah, it appears to be. I remember a big, he gave him a big flashlight at one time, but I don't remember. Now, do you see that? I remember, but I don't remember. I don't know where it was, but I know where it was. Steve Thomas's colleague says, is it plastic material it's made out of? Patsy says, it seemed like it was heavy. I don't know. Okay. Patsy says, John would remember. Now, it's interesting how when the flashlight is brought up, Patsy refers to John, John Andrew, and Burke. If Patsy Ramsey wrote the ransom note in the wee hours of the day after Christmas, might she not have used a flashlight? Might she have written the note on the kitchen counter? Because neighbors said the lights were off throughout the night. So how would you write a three-page ransom note with the lights out? So Steve Thomas's colleague goes on to say, Okay, next, let me do this for the secretary. When you were talking about the drawer that the flashlight was normally kept in, refer back to that other picture, the drawer by the sink. Patsy responds, Yeah. 
Steve Thomas's colleague says, bottom of the staircase, that's a reference to the spiral staircase. Patsy says, yeah. The officer goes on to say, the drawer to the left of, and then that part's inaudible. Now, interestingly, when Patsy's asked about a far more obscure item, we're not going to deal with it here, but when she's asked about the binoculars, it's far more obscure than a flashlight. She knows exactly where they are. But now let's deal with John's second interview. There are over 20 instances where flashlight is mentioned in his interview. It's from John's second interview, June 23rd, 1998. Lou Smith says, Okay, did you use a flashlight at that point? John Ramsey, no. Smith, what kind of flashlight do you have? John Ramsey, well, we've got several, I guess. One that I believe came up as an item was this mag light flashlight. If it's the one I think it is, my son gave me that for a Christmas present a year or two ago. And that was probably in the bar. The bar drawer was typically where it was kept. Now, the first part of this answer is exactly the way you'd expect the answer to be answered. We have a few fla flashlights, um, but the one I guess you're referring to is X, Y, and Z, and A gave it to me. But the second part is that the flashlight was supposed to be in the drawer in the bar area. Anyway, Lou Smith continues. He says, you don't remember getting that? John Ramsey, meaning you don't remember retrieving the flashlight that night. John Ramsey says, no, I know I did not get it. Lou Smith, anyone else get it? John Ramsey, not that I recall. I don't even know it worked. Typically, our flashlights didn't work because we needed new batteries. We might have a few blown flashlights around. So it's quite interesting how he reinforces the idea that not only did he not get it, but no one else got it. Why? Because it didn't work. So if it was the Ramsey flashlight and it didn't work, why was it out there? If it did work, why was it out there? Now, do you see John is suggesting either that it wasn't his flashlight or if it was, because he says, if it's the one I think it is, then someone else removed it from the drawer, but none of them. This raises an additional question. If an intruder didn't kill John Bonet, or even if one did, did the Ramses know John Bonet had received a blow to the head? And if they knew the flashlight was the murder weapon, why not simply leave it in the drawer or put it in the drawer? Now let's deal with a third and final interview reviewing Patsy's second statement to law enforcement. This is from June 23, 1998. Detective Tom Haney asks, OK, the next group of photos, and these are not numbered. Patsy Ramsey says, uh-huh, Haney. But they show a flashlight, Patsy Ramsey, uh-huh, Haney, a black metal string light type, Patsy Ramsey, uh-huh, flashlight. Do you recognize that? Patsy says, it looks similar to the one that John Andrew gave John for Christmas, birthday or something, Haney. Okay, do you recall when it was that it, he gave it to him or Patsy? Not exactly, uh-uh. Although it looks kind of dirty there, I mean, if I remember Haney, it looks different, Patsy, yeah. Then another detective says, okay, describe how it looks different. Patsy says, well, the one that I remember John having was pretty slick black, you know, and that kind of, that kind of looks smudgy or gray or something. Well, why does it look like that? Because it was dusted for prints. Patsy can have an eye for detail when she wants to. Detective Haney's colleague explains, saying, OK, that's been processed, so it has been changed. Patsy, oh, OK. Law enforcement, other than that, do you notice any differences from Patsy Ramsey? Uh-huh, meaning yes. Law enforcement, that's similar to the one that John Andrew gave John. Patsy Ramsey, yeah, uh-huh, meaning yes. Law enforcement, and I think last time when you were here on last April, Patsy, uh-huh, law enforcement, you said where that was stored, Patsy, uh-huh, yes, law enforcement, and I wanted to clarify that a little bit. Do you remember where it was stored, Patsy? Well, the best I recall is it was in like one of those junk drawers there in the bar area, law enforcement, okay, and 
I wanted to flip back to photo 380 right there, Patsy. Right here, one of those drawers. Law enforcement. One of the drawers that's depicted in 380, Patsy. Yeah. Law enforcement. Do you remember which drawer, Patsy? Well, I most I recently remember it being, you know, right in this drawer. Law enforcement. The drawer that is open, Patsy. That's open there. Yeah. Law enforcement. And that's the wet bar that's by the sp spiral staircase, right? Patsy. Right. So you can see how there's a suggestion here that the intruder or some activity happened near the spiral staircase. Firstly, the note was left there. And secondly, right around the corner, the flashlight was apparently retrieved from near there. But the most important thing to bear in mind here is that there is an association between the ransom note, which we know was staged, and the flashlight, ditto. So Haney's colleague goes on to say, OK, OK, and now looking at photo 380, you don't see a flashlight in there, right? Patsy, correct. Ali, OK, Patsy, where was this flashlight found? Th those are Patsy's words. Where was this flashlight found? Are you kidding me? Anyway, the um, law enforcement officer says, well, do you remember when you came in on in April, they showed you a picture of the flashlight? Do you recall that? You may not. And so the flashlight is just out of frame on the right of this image. Anyway, Patsy responds, no, not exactly. Ali. Okay, this was on the kitchen counter. Patsy. Oh. Ali. We don't have a picture of that, do we? Tom Haney says, he speaks up, he says, No, it's, it's in the video, I believe, but I don't. Patsy. Uh-huh. Haney. I don't remember one. Ali. You know, it's if, I can try to describe it, you know, if you're coming from the front door and you going through your kitchen... Now, do you notice in 1998, John is so aware of the flashlight, he refers to it. He volunteers, he initiates that he's aware that it's an item of evidence. Those are his own words. Meanwhile, Patsy has completely forgotten about it. Patsy's amnesia is so complete, one of the detectives has got to describe her own kitchen to her and how one approaches the counter from it and where the flashlight was on it. Patsy says, uh-huh. Ali says, and you've kind of got that first nook or whatever you call it. Patsy says, yeah, right. Ali, and if you're looking towards that nook area, it would be sort of on the left island area, kind of that area. Patsy says, okay. Then Ali says, does that make sense to you? Patsy says, it doesn't make sense to me. I mean, like I said, usually it was kept in that drawer in there. So do you notice there's a big divergence here between how John handles this issue and how Patsy does? Patsy doesn't seem to know much about it, and it doesn't make sense to Patsy. So that is a huge statement. Patsy is basically in her cheerleader outfit, um, you know, met metaphorically, waving a giant red flag at the flashlight. It doesn't make sense. It shouldn't be there. And yet, as red flaggy as it is, Patsy apparently hasn't read, realized that until now. So on the one hand, it's a big red flag. On the other hand, Patsy doesn't seem to be even aware of it. You'd think that if you thought there was an intruder, that that would have been in your mind all along. And when she's asked if it makes sense and it's described to her, um, again, you've got to think if she's believed all this time that there's someone out there, surely the flashlight is Exhibit B, next to the ransom note, which is Exhibit A. Does that make sense? Anyway, um, Haney's colleague says, uh-huh. Patsy says, no, I don't know. Haney's colleague says, why would that be out? Meaning, why would the flashlight be out? Patsy says, I don't know. Ali, okay, I notice you have cameras out and other things. Patsy, I'm not a very good housekeeper. Ali, there was a video camera, I think, on that kitchen island there or something like that. I may not have that exactly, Patsy. I vaguely remember a video camera being out because I was probably turning it up to take pictures, meaning charging it. 
uh, on Christmas morning, but then we never ended up taking any. That's, now, that is also curious. They have a camera out there charging, right? It's a video camera. And you have a former pageant queen with a pageant princess who's done countless photo shoots of her daughter, but she forgot to do this on Christmas. Anyway, Ali goes on to say, Uh-huh, did you guys use this flashlight much, Patsy? I didn't, no. Now that also stands out to me. Did you guys use the flashlight much? I didn't, no. Interesting answer, isn't it? Patsy wasn't asked whether she did, but whether anyone did. And I think a credible answer could be, yeah, sometimes, meaning several people may have occasionally used it. Yeah, maybe some, some people did sometimes. But I didn't know is an awfully specific answer giving, given the non-specific question. Does that make sense? Ali goes on to say, who did? So in response to Patsy saying, I didn't use it, Ali asks, who did? Patsy responds, John used it. Ali says, what did he use it for, Patsy? I don't know, looking in the garage and the car or something like that. Now remember, this was the suggestion Steve Thomas made the previous year. It's also interesting that Patsy thinks the flashlight could be used everywhere except inside the house, and not even a thought that it might be used, for example, in the basement, which one may imagine is where many flashlights are commonly used. So Ali goes on to say, okay, had you ever seen it on the kitchen counter before, Patsy? Not that I recall, Ali. Would it have struck you as unusual or would that not be outside the realm of possibilities given the habits of the family? Patsy responds, It seems like it would have been unusual to have made it all the way into the kitchen because usually if someone was using the flashlight, they were, John was looking at something in the garage or under the car or something like that. Now, I've highlighted these words in bold, so let me read them again. So, Patsy's asked, you know, would it be unusual for the flashlight to be on the kitchen counter? Now, I don't know about you. Have you ever left a flashlight on the kitchen counter? I have. Have you ever left a flashlight somewhere else in the, in the house? Patsy says, it seems like it would have been unusual to have made it all the way into the kitchen. And now, bear in mind, it's really just around the corner. But anyway, she goes on to say, because usually if someone was using the flashlight, they were... John was looking at something in the garage or under the car or something like that. On its own merits, what do you think of Patsy's explanation? It's almost like she's saying, well, if they were using the flashlight, would they have left it in the garage? Would they have left it outside the house, right? I mean, what would be so unusual about searching for John Bonet in the dark, perhaps outside, outside the house in the dark? What would be so unusual about a flashlight being out at night following... Um, Christmas wrapping and secretly putting Christmas gifts under a tree. It's even possible the kids may have snuck out, whether to the basement or to simply play with the toys downstairs while others were asleep and used the flashlight. If the kids could take out a bowl of pineapple and make some tea and leave that on or, um, you know, leave the, the bowl on the or near the kitchen table, why would it be so odd to take a flashlight out and leave it in the same area? Ali goes on to, uh, to say, okay, Patsy says, but he might, you know, I'm sure you must have asked him if he, Haney, and maybe I missed it, and it's unfortunate that he interrupts here, but he says, do you know when you last saw it in the drawer? Patsy says, no, I'm not, I'm not for sure. Haney, do you remember ever putting batteries in it or buying batteries for it? Somebody says, whoo. The battery is low, get us some. It is an interesting question. Were the batteries low? Could the flashlight have been used at length throughout the night? What's also weird is there's no sense of real ownership. Is that my or our flashlight or isn't it? That <laughs> They just don't seem to know. If you thought someone had broken into your home, killed someone close to you, wouldn't you be highlighting the most obvious evidence of that? That's not my flashlight. Why is the flashlight out there? Why would you not really remember it? 
Anyway, Patsy says no. Tom Haney says CD sells. Patsy, no, it just kind of wasn't my, my thing, you know. Haney, okay, how about, do you recall uh, using that during, say, power outage or to check on the kids at night? Anything along those lines? Patsy, no, I don't remember that. Haney, there are two more photos on the back sides of the same flashlight. Next, we have photos that are numbered 113. So I'm not going to take not going to take you through any more of that interview, but I do think you'll agree that Patsy's own words suggest that there's a sense that the flashlight is or should be important, right? That there's something unusual about it. But is the flashlight important? Is it important or is it misdirection, either intentional or unintentional? Now, on page 214 of Steve Thomas's book, John Bonet, Inside the Ramsey Murder Investigation, the detective writes, quote, The kitchen with a restaurant-sized walk-in refrigerator, gas stovetop, convection and microwave ovens was arranged in an efficient workflow pattern. Lou Smith wanted to examine a place where photographs indicated an unexplained spot of blood, but Detective Gossage pointed out it wasn't blood, Lou, just spilled juice. Then he writes, a big flashlight found in the kitchen remained unexplained. Then this is also from Steve Thomas's book. Quote, when Smith showed Ramsey a photo of the unidentified boot print in the cellar, Ramsey's private investigator was allowed to lean over and draw the pattern. When the detectives reviewed the videotape, Gossage threw a can of skull tobacco at the television screen and stormed from the room, cursing that a year's worth of work had just been handed to a prime suspect and his lawyer. Importantly, Ramsey said the dirty flashlight found at the scene did not belong to the family. We knew that he owned one just like it. And now let's go to Lauren Schiller's book, Perfect Murder, Perfect Town. There are 14 references to flashlight, including these. Quote, the police said that, the, that John Bonet's head injury could have been caused by the flashlight they found on the Ramsey's kitchen counter, although nothing had been found on the flashlight to tie it to the crime or to the injury. There was nothing on the child's scalp to suggest the pattern on the casing of the mag light. Whatever had struck John Bonet on the head had left a rectangular hole, and then it re makes a reference to golf clubs. There's also reference to uh, important evidence, and one of them listed is the flashlight. There's also the writing pad, the Sharpie pen, all found in the kitchen area. The flashlight was left on the kitchen counter. Again, there's a reference to that as possibly being the murder weapon. Then there's also this reference to flashlight from Perfect Murder, Perfect Town. Patsy was shown a photo of the flashlight that had been found on the kitchen counter. Patsy said the family owned one like it, but she couldn't tell from the photo if this was the one. And then this, these are Schiller's words. Schiller says, Patsy was not only vague, Thomas felt, but coy and charming, even flirtatious. Thomas knew better than to be influenced by it. He was also trained to be circumspect. He was sure that Patsy was involved. He just didn't know how. But this is all regarding this idea of the flashlight. Then one more reference. When Patsy's interview was over, it was John Ramsey's turn. He was dressed casually. The detectives took Ramsey through his previous statements. They questioned him about putting John Bonet to bed. And uh, he said that she had been asleep and that Rick French was mistaken. He hadn't said, I put her to bed and read her a book. What he had said was, I put her to bed and then I read a book. Ramsey also told the detectives that Burke had slept through the events of that morning until he was awakened for the short ride to the Whites. And finally, in the Ramsey's book, The Death of Innocence, which interestingly, you, it doesn't allow a search function. So you're able to search keywords in the other two books I've referenced. You can't do that with the Ramsey's book. Anyway, the first instances referring to flashlight are buried as far back as page 366. And that kind of raises this question, did someone take out the flashlight and forget it there, or was it placed intentionally on the kitchen counter? Was it placed there intentionally? If so, why? And that brings us to 
concluding remarks on this topic, the real significance of the flashlight. And we're going to go through five. Number one, to some, including James Kolar, the flashlight is the murder weapon. If something else was the murder weapon, and I, be, I believe something else was the murder weapon, then intentionally placing the flashlight where it was and then failing to account for it may give the flashlight unusual significance in this case, significance it doesn't deserve. In my view, just as the ransom note is a misdirection, so is the flashlight. A key clue is that neither have any fingerprints on them, which suggests whoever may have placed these evidence artifacts into the scene did so carefully and deliberately. In short, the flashlight is meant to misdirect away from the actual murder weapon, isn't it? This is misdirection in terms of object, but why? Number two, if you believe the flashlight was the murder weapon, then your first thought is going to be, who would use it and who did it belong to? Neither of these lines of inquiry will get you onto the right track, however. In short, the flashlight is something that could be used by anyone, and so it muddles the idea of who committed the crime. This is misdirection in terms of the most likely person to wield the flashlight, or it could be. Number three, the flashlight in the kitchen suggests the kitchen is the crime scene. The kitchen is where John Bonet died. Well, I don't believe John Bonet died in the kitchen, and I believe the ransom note and the flashlight are meant to misdirect attention in terms of location away from other quarters in the house, including, for example, the basement. If this was intentional, it worked, because when Ali searched the house, they didn't focus much on the basement, and much time was spent in the kitchen and adjoining areas. In short, the flashlight also muddles the way of the crime. So we see misdirection in terms of place. Number four, I believe the flashlight was used that night, in the dark, and after writing the ransom note, the thought surfaced about using the flashlight to reinforce some of the misdirections in the ransom note. Flashlights are also items that typically appear in the movies, especially movies associated with break-ins and criminal activity. Number five, in sum, the flashlight is meant to confuse what actually happened in terms of where, what, how, who, and possibly when as well. So, if the flashlight isn't the murder weapon, what is? Well, I believe the murder weapon was a softball bat, and that that's what made the metallic sound when tossed outside the window. The idea of a bat and flashlight also come up when Burke Ramsey was interviewed by Dr. Phil. They show you either of those items? They showed me a picture of the baseball bat, like on the side of the house or something. Yeah. Is there anything strange about it being out there to you? And do you find it odd that it's out there? And that was my baseball bat. I would normally like leave it out on the patio. Do you notice how Burke himself doesn't really respond to the flashlight at all? And is that a misdirection or is the flashlight just not really important to him? Instead, what he does refer to is the bat, but in order to say, well, there's nothing to see here. Yeah, it was my bat and I often left it outside. Right. So one of the Ramsey neighbors, Melody Stanton's husband, reported hearing a strange sound that he described as metal crushing or hitting concrete late at night. If we go to Schiller again, uh, in terms of his account, the Stanton's husband had heard a crashing sound, the sound of metal on concrete, sometime after the scream. Now, if you imagine someone hiding Jean Bonnet in the most secret part of the house and removing her clothing and wiping her down, you can imagine the same thing with regard to the murder weapon, trying to dispose of it, wiping it down and trying to get rid of it. Because to not do so would or could invite questions as to who, who was more or less likely to wield a particular bat in a particular part of the house. And the fact is there were two people in the Ramsey home who played softball. Patsy was one, Jomine's brother Burke was the other. Patsy Ramsey played softball with a team called Mom's Gone Bad that was sponsored by John's company. So all of this talk about the flashlight, doesn't that distract attention away from a bat? Conclusion, 
We see staging and thus misdirection in the Delphi case. One of the admissions when there is staging is this idea that without staging, one would quite quickly and easily assume who or where or how or all of these a crime was committed. And so in a sense, we must intuit the staging, but we must also interrogate the idea of the crime minus the staging and where that might inevitably lead us. If you want to understand staging and misdirection, in my opinion, you can't do better, or is that worse, than the John Bonnet Ramsey case, the ransom note for starters, or the Madeleine McCann case. Pay attention to this citing, not that one. Far from staging being something that confuses the fabric of a crime scene, in the right hands and with the right mind, staging can actually reveal the thing that a perpetrator is going to so much trouble to conceal. In the Delphi case, what is that thing? So I'm not going to take it further than that, but I will be looking at staging and misdirection in the Delphi case. This episode has kind of been a primer to that. How are words used to misdirect, but also how are certain objects used to misdirect? So I hope I've got those gears, those true crime rocket science gears turning in that regard. So watch this space. We will be doing a live stream on staging and misdirection in the Delphi case later today. Thank you for listening and I'll see you guys next time.